Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2, fellow Vuperians. So, today we are going to be looking into the Rosh Limit once again because, you know, I was wondering about, we've used black holes before as kind of a shotgun device to rip a planet apart and throw it at another planet, but I think there may be a much easier way to do this. I don't even think we need a black hole. Uh, as long as we have a sufficiently massive planet, we should be able to cause quite a bit of damage. So for our target, we're going to be using Mars. We're going to use Mercury as ammo, and then we're going to need quite a bit of mass to mess with the two. We're going to s make both Mars and Earth still, because otherwise this would be really challenging to pull off. So if we position lock both of those... Oh, wait. Uh, no, that's going to work fine. And now we're going to have Mercury get uncomfortably close to Earth. We need to get it so close that the Roshlam will kick in. And I actually think that the moon will work better for this. So let's launch the moon at an angle where the gravitational pull of the Earth will rip the moon apart, but the moon won't hit Earth. So I think at this angle, this is going to work out perfectly. And hopefully those particles that the moon emits get curved around Earth's gravity and get flung into Mars as planned. Is it gonna kick in? Have we hit the limit? I'm not sure if we did. Oh, there we are. We have actually pulled some material out of the moon as planned. And they seem to be on track towards Mars, but the moon is crashing back into its own material. Uh, a bigger planet would probably work better uh, so that it would completely rip the moon apart. It looks like all we've done is we have slingshotted the entire moon at Mars, which is still going to do quite a bit of damage. Actually, it looks like it's going to just pass by Mars. It'll get pulled a little bit and its orbit will be turned, but it was not quite enough. So what we're going to do is we are going to artificially increase the mass of the Earth. How massive of an object do we need to do this easily? So let's make Earth five times its normal mass, and let's get the moon once again. This time we're going to have to go a little bit further away because we don't want it to actually hit the Earth. And it's going to actually hit the Earth. Oof, Earth. Thankfully, Earth is still for this experiment, so we don't have to worry about that getting in the way of anything. Um, of course, we have done quite a bit of damage to Earth, but let's try this again. The moon a little bit further away. Here goes the moon. It's going to get really close. Oh! And look at all the matter that was ejected there. That's a lot of stuff. It's just not going in the right direction. But, have no fear, we can try this again. There we go. Just gotta go over here. It looks like it took a full 90 degree turn. So, if we go over here, I think we can actually pull this off. Right here. Oh, that's gonna be close. Oh! Beautiful! Is one of those, I think one of those objects are actually going to crash into Mars' surface. Will they hit the Martian land? Ah, uh, no. That was actually really close, though. Um, I think the concept is there. My aim is just horribly off. So it looked like that went too far to the right. So we have to go at a super, super high angle. We gotta go over 180 degrees to make this work properly. Which means that we may have to increase the amount of power we're giving... The moon here, the amount of speed, or we have to get a little bit further away from Earth. Or we just angle it like that? No. Yeah, a little bit further away from Earth. I think about here is going to work. This is going to do it right here. Oh no, that, that hit Earth. Beautiful, we just vaporized the moon again. Um, we're very good at doing that. I know that for sure. Okay, so we're gonna have to give it a little bit more speed, I think. So, for launch, we're gonna set it to 15 kilometers per second, and we're gonna see if this is able to handle it. 
Oh, there we go. That's nice. A little bit too far that way. So we're going to modify the launch velocity again. Let's put it at 12. We'll go on the lower end. Now we want to get the uh, it pretty flat because the Earth and Mars are actually flying flat compared to each other. So we don't have to worry. As long as we keep the moon flat, that shouldn't be an issue. Is it enough? Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. Oh, those may actually hit Mars. These look like Mars is going to be the greatest gravitational pull on them. I'm not sure if they're going to get close enough, though, to get pulled into Mars orbit. No. Not quite, but the moon is going back in for another run. So, there is actually a slight chance that the moon's going to do its job this time. As it rips past the Earth again, that's a lot more material this time. Acting a whole lot more like a shotgun. And it looks like a lot of that material is actually going towards Mars. Here we go. Ooh! All over the surface of Mars, too. And the great thing about space is if you manage to rip an object apart like this, it's not like there's anything to slow them down in space, so this could be infinitely far away. Obviously, the further away Mars is, the harder it is to actually hit Mars. And it looks like the moon just got completely destroyed, which sent a few more fragments in the way of Mars. I don't think these ones are actually going to hit, though. Um, but point being that in theory this works rather well and if we turn Earth's mass up just a little bit more um, we can probably annihilate much larger objects for example if we were to launch Venus now the amount of power oh yeah um, we're gonna have to use a little bit more speed so now we're gonna double it to 20 kilometers per second and if we shot Venus off at that speed is it going to escape? It is going to escape, but look how big the objects are that are being thrown off of Venus. That obviously wasn't super successful. The larger the objects are, the harder we have, uh, harder time we have controlling it, but we can be very strategic about it at the same time. Oh, shoot, we just threw all of Venus at Mars. This is not going to end well for Mars. Ooh, maybe it will end well for Mars. Uh, I'm sure it heated up a little bit. I'm not sure what the temperature was before because there's no sun. But that was a very close call. So in theory, this does work. But when it comes to it, it seems to just be more efficient to do what we were doing before, which was using a black hole. And if you guys didn't see that, all you had to do is you need to know the line between Earth and Mars. There it is. We just get a little black hole, we plop it down right here, and then we position lock the black hole. We turn down time, and it's going to rip all of the matter out of Earth. Any second now. Ooh! And this matter being ripped out of Earth, some of it's just going to fling past it. And since so it's in the direction of Mars, it's going to throw material at Mars. In theory, it seems to not be working very well this time. Maybe they fixed that. It appears they did actually fix that. That's sad. I wanted it to work. But it looks like the black hole did a very good job of removing Earth. Good job, black hole. Proud of you. Hmm, let's try this on a slightly bigger scale. If we were to have, let's say we have Earth here, and let's use Jupiter as our uh, ripping device. So we're going to position lock Jupiter, and we're going to position lock Earth. And now we are going to use, let's just use another Earth as ammo if we go like this we need to go in a direction where this earth isn't going to hit jupiter again oh shoot that's not gonna 
That's not quite gonna work, but I can't actually change the direction of Earth's motion. And it looks like Jupiter's gravitational hold is just too high. It's stealing the debris. Yeah, I'm not sure that is going to work. Oh, actually, it looks like the stuff getting flung out is actually growing in uh, diameter. It's going a bit past Earth. So if we continue this, I wonder if eventually some of the particles would go out far enough to hit Earth. I don't know. We need to use something a little bit bigger that can get its particles out a bit further. So let's test with Saturn. If we put Saturn way too close to Jupiter so that it will get ripped apart. There we go. So Saturn is now being ripped apart. Oh yeah, look at that. That's going to smack into Earth rather hard. Oh, but all that stuff just disappeared instantly. Oh, it's there. It's just kind of invisible. And we can see it actually smacking into Earth. It looks like this battle between Saturn and Jupiter is much more heated. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, the hydrogen was thrown at Earth rather quickly. Now Earth... I don't know if Earth has gained mass or lost mass from that. Let's see. Nah, we've lost mass. And it looks like some particles are getting very, very close. So slingshotting planets at other planets as an attack de uh, mechanism? Eh, you know, it would be pretty hard to get a planet to go towards another planet in the first place. You're probably better off just, you know, destroying the ecosystem on the planet if you want your enemy to have a bad time. Or... Alternatively, if you have the power to move planets, why not just blow up a planet next to it? Because that is going to ruin <laughs> their day. <laughs> oh, Earth, I'm sorry that you're the center of all this mean attacking. But, you know, someone's got to do it. And you represent the greatest uh, minds of humanity, I guess. Because we destroy you. For science. I will see you all next time. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Bye.